yes ashwarya it's fine okay yeah hello everyone good morning and uh, thanks for joining okay let me share my screen and uh, i have created some slides to walk you through what is caching hope my screen is visible yes i should okay okay um just to first uh, give some context like about the redis cache first i thought i'll explain what is caching and uh, why it is important what what all types of caching is available and why we should choose redis as a cache for our applications so caching is what we can say a mechanism to improve the performance of any type of an application so it is a process of like storing some data into the cache and then retrieving it instead of accessing the application so that gives us some improvement on the performance and so what is basically a cache so cache is nothing but a software or a hardware component that is aimed at storing the data for us so that any future request that comes into the application need not hit the application but it can be instead served from the cache so that is what is caching in uh, as a basic terminology means okay um, does anybody have any question on this like have you guys uh, any time used caching before in your application we can make it interactive if anybody wants to give some input yes guys any question any doubt so i sure this is a persistent caching or a temporary caching so this is like a persistent caching that what i have implemented but yes temporary caching is also feasible so that we will talk about later um yes yeah so both type of caching is available and it follows which uh, method of first in first out or last in first out so if you uh, speak in terms of redis right so in redis we have separate eviction policies like all keys lru is there which actually says how you want to evict the keys that has been inserted okay mm -hmm. that is that is how like there are separate eviction policies uh, that are meant for the redis specifically that we will talk about um, and also there are some caching strategies within redis that how we can implement that also we are going to talk about so have you implemented caching before in your application we yeah, have implemented redis redis okay that's great then yeah okay uh, okay let me move on to the next slide like why basically is important to improve the performance and it can make your website run faster and it can also reduce the stress on your database so that's the main uh, importance of caching it can be any type of caching that we can implement so and uh, what are the types of caching that is available so one is in memory caching next is database caching then there is web caching which has two types in it sub subtypes in it like the web client caching or the web server caching and then there is cdm caching so today what i am going to talk about is more going to be with the web server caching that is the api response caching that i have implemented for my application and uh, yes there are like uh, we have to choose which caching is going to be suitable for us like in memory caching or database caching or the client level caching or the cdn caching cdn caching you all might be knowing about the cloudflare or um, like other um, cdn providers can you guys excuse me for a minute sorry about that okay uh, so i was talking about the cdn caching so cdn caching is nothing but the uh, the caching done at the uh, cdn level like for our static files like it could be style sheets it could be javascript files um, 
it could be any static files that we want to cache at the CDN level. So in my application, there is a there is already implemented a Cloudflare caching that's already in place for these static uh, assets. So next, what we were targeting was we wanted to cache the dynamic content that is an API responses. So how we can cache it? Um, so that for that reason, we chose uh, Redis for the caching. Okay, let me move on to what is Redis and um, how we are going to, or uh, what can be possible with Redis. So Redis basically is a fast open source in memory uh, data store. So it's the key value data store. So it's it's like a database only, key value manner. Um, so that can be used for storing data and retrieving and the retrieval make uh, faster from it. So the possible use cases of Redis is caching. One possible use cases is caching. Does anybody have any question? Sorry. No, no question. So the possible use case of Redis is one, uh, the important use case is caching. So we can leverage caching with Redis. So it it comes, it is generally a great choice for implementing uh, in-memory cache to decrease the data access from uh, from your database. So in, uh, in order to reduce the stress on the database, on any database, it could be a relational database like a SQL or a NoSQL no databases. We can implement Redis. So instead of hitting the database every time, you can directly pull the data from Redis and serve it to the uh, your front end or the client. So that's the main idea about uh, caching with Redis. So there are like uh, some patterns available, caching patterns available in Redis. So one is like the um, like a lazy loading pattern. So which says that um, when your application needs to read data from the database, it will it will check the cache first whether the the data is available in the cache to determine whether it has to be pulled from the uh, cache or it has to be pulled from the database. So um, it, if the uh, data is available in the cache, the data will be retrieved from the cache. If it's not available, it will be retrieved from the database and then it will be cached again. So if that is the case, the point number two will be applicable. That is a cache hit will happen. That is a uh, data is not available in the cache and um, it will be returned and the response will be again uh, like will be stored in the cache. Okay, am, am I going too fast? Uh, do you guys have any doubt? No, Priya, this is fine. But uh, if you talk about this point, won't it make it uh, slow hitting the database and then it will not serve, serve the purpose of caching, right? Yeah, that's correct. But um, like in this case, that will be like uh, useful for me, wherein like um, for me, the database hit isn't that much problem. I want to basically improve the performance. Okay, so in, in that case, I can, like for one time, I can hit my database and see that, uh, like if the data is not available in the cache, I can check the database and then I can retrieve it and I can store it in the cache. So in your application, what is the frequency which you check for this? It is only going to be as per the request. It's not going to be every time it is going to check the cache. So like uh, whenever a user requests for any data, it will be first checked in the cache. If it's available in the cache, then it's good. It will be directly retrieved from there and served to the user. If it's not available, then it will be uh, retrieved from the database and then stored in the cache back. Asif, it will check the cache data availability. If cache data is not uh, available, then it will uh, pull the data from database and it will store in the cache. But it's not going to be checking very frequently. It's only like Correct. request basis. Correct. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I think so we should uh, put the questions towards the end, I guess. Otherwise, it would be a discussion session. No, that's OK. Like yeah. uh, That will be beneficial, right? Instead okay. of just going like me walking through the slides, if there are some questions, we can stop and we can answer. Fine, that's great. Yeah. 
so this was all about the lazy loading so the next comes is the write through write through will be like my cache will be written first so an application is neither going to or i can say it is never going to talk to the database it will be talking to my um, cache itself the cache will be talking to my database and um, so in this what will happen is like even my cache is not updated it will be like uh, intermediately talking to my database and it will get updated on a timely manner like and write through cache reverses the order of cache like how it has been populated instead of like like, like the lazy loading data in the cache after a cache miss the cache has been proactively updated um, even after the, like the primary database is been updated so that's the difference between a lazy loading and the write through any questions here Okay. So, my Ashura, my question is, uh, what is the best fit case scenario when you have to choose between a Redis or a Kafka? So, in my suggestion, first of all, you need to see like what is already available with you. Are you like implementing Kafka before? Have you been implemented it? So, in our case, what happened was we were using Redis. We had our own Redis server for uh, for the authentication purposes. So, we thought we have a Redis server already. So, why can't we leverage it for the caching? So, that was the reason we went with the cache, uh, went with the Redis. But if there is an additional advantage uh, in comparison to Redis, if Kafka is beneficial, then you can go with Kafka. So, it's not like we have to stick to the Redis. The reason why I was um, like giving some thoughts on Redis because we have implemented it for our uh, for our application already. Mm, my question is how you how you will weigh the benefit like which one to choose when? Uh, Asif, uh, Kafka is a message broker. Redis is a caching for uh, in memory as well as distributed caching. When we go for Kafka, when we want to communication between the two services. And we want to make it a sync communication. That time we go for Kafka. So here, as we, here yeah. also we can make it async. That is yeah. not a problem. But the advantage that we will have to understand, like over Redis, right? That's the uh, main point here. Like why it is that we should be choosing Redis instead of Kafka. Um, I think. There are many uh, things like the speed and the message retention uh, that is, I think, possible with Kafka, which is not possible with Redis. Um, like, I won't say I, I have a right now answer for you, but yes, we, I will have to compare and come back, like, uh, which would be the beneficial. So, so what I was it, saying in your, is... In your slide, you have you prepared that thing? No, right now okay. we are only we have only targeted Redis. So that's what I was saying. This is not a comparison session of which is like the beneficial one. The Redis caching we have already implemented, and this was like uh, what we can say um, uh, um, to make someone understand if they want to implement Redis, what all they can do to implement it. You're fine. Yeah. But yeah, I have noted your question, and I'll come back on that. OK, um, so this was the two patterns that are available in the Redis. Does anyone have any question on this? Which one to choose and uh, which one is better? Go ahead, Ashwin. OK, fine. So the next I wanted to talk about was the um, cache eviction policy that is available in the redis so how frequently we should be uh, like removing the data from the redis so yeah i'll talk about that So there are different uh, cache eviction policies. One is what uh, I just, like I told before, the LRU that is the least recently used. 
So the keys that has been re least recently used will be evicted by the Redis if we are applying that policy. So uh, that is one. The second is the least frequently used. So if we are going for the least frequently used, um, uh, the Redis will automatically remove the key that has been least frequently used. We can set some um, time for that or basis which the Redis will define. OK, this has not been used uh, for this time period and it will be removed from the Redis. And then the next is the first in first out. Uh, so sure you have not changed the slide, I guess. Oh, I, I think it's been struck. Let me check. No, it looks like it's stuck. Let me stop share and start the sharing again. Give me a moment. Uh, my share button is disabled. Let me try again. Looks like Krishna, I need to rejoin the call. Uh, my share button got disabled. You can drop and rejoin, no? Yeah, I'm trying to do that.
Sorry about that. I had to restart my machine. Okay, I'll share my screen again. Hope my screen is visible now. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. So um, I last left uh, in the cash caching patterns. Let me go through the cash eviction policies. So the first one that I talked about was the least recently used that is LRU. And this is like the default one that is present in the Redis. And um, what it does, like the name suggests, the least recently used element will be evicted by the Redis. And um, it will be determined by based on the timestamp. Uh, when it was added to the Redis, and uh, uh, this is what even I am making use of my uh, for my application. I am using the LRU technique only to evict the uh, the keys that are not being used anymore. The second is the least frequently used, um, which is which is like similar to the least recently used, but here we can set the max limit. Um, basis which it will be determined okay if uh, if that key is been accessed like if i uh, set the max limit as five and um, if the key is not been accessed um, or it, the, if the key has been accessed uh, the max limit has been reached um, the element with the least number of hit then the least frequently used element has been evicted so this will help us in keeping the uh, the redis database clean and with the with the help of these eviction policies we'll be able to um, keep the database clean and uh, we'll be able to evict the keys on a timely manner saying that if these are not being used it, it need not get accumulated in the database and the next is the fifo that is first in first out elements that are evicted in the same order as they come in when a when a call has been made for a new element the element that was placed first in the store is will be evicted and uh, it will be then uh, a storage or a place will be made for the new keys that can be stored any questions here no i can You can move. You can move to the next slide. Okay. So uh, these were all about the Redis caching. Like basically, so Redis caching can be determined. Like basically, we can first of all we need to choose the caching pattern. Which caching pattern are we going uh, to use? That is either it has to be the lazy loading or the write through pattern. Once we choose the caching pattern. Then we need to choose the eviction policies that will be suitable for our application. So, basis these two strategies, then we can um, use the Redis as a caching for our application. So, uh, that's all I had related to the Redis. Okay, Shwane. Yeah. Any questions, anybody? Is there any demo you're giving? No, I haven't planned for any demo. Uh, but yeah, I can plan for a demo that uh, like how the Redis has been implemented in our application. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Anyone? Okay, Ashwarya. Uh, thank you for giving the session. Uh, thank you, Ashwarya. And uh, all, um, hi, all guys, uh, for thank you for giving your time and uh, joining the sessions. And, uh, thank you. Again, uh, in the next week, we are coming with uh, microservices with uh, demo also it will be more than a uh, few sessions on microservices we are planning with the solution and presentations and uh, we will come up with uh, microservices thank you guys for joining this session thank you everyone thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you everyone thank you.